Good morning everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. As you can see, I am in my backyard again today. I just finished these three pots that I have on the south side of my house. They're looking gorgeous. I'm so excited about the flowers uh, to get started and see how they do. Uh, you know working with each other in combination these were recipes that i just came up with just you know just put the plants together myself these pots that i have here closer to my patio um i actually am going to try the proven winners recipes that they have on their website so if you guys aren't familiar with that proven winners tests out all their plants um you know extensively and likes to see what plants work well with each other in combinations like pots and even in the lands Landscape. So all I did, I knew what heat tolerant plants I wanted to try this year. So all I did is I searched up those plants on the website and then it came up with different recipes that work well with those plants. And I just picked from those recipes just because why not? It's super easy. So um, today I have to tell you guys, this morning was so wonderful. We're having beautiful weather right now. Um, not too hot, not too cold. And my family and I actually were able to eat breakfast breakfast out here on the patio, which is something that we really like to do in the summer. Um, you know, we like to eat dinner out here as well. And it just reminds me, I have to get this patio area kind of fixed up and ready to go for the season. So I have a bunch of stuff that I want to do, including new rugs and, um, you know, new pillows. And I want to go to the store and see if I can find a hanging, one of those chair hammocks. I think, I think that would be really cute out here. And I think my girls would really like it. So this is kind of the area that I want to focus on over the next week or so just because it's time it's time that we're gonna we're gonna start spending a lot of time out here and I'm really excited about that I have five white pots in this pot patio area so I want to focus on those first I'm gonna start with this trio here today and then this two over here I'm actually gonna leave for another day because I have plants still coming in the mail um, I ended up not ordering enough of what I needed and I really need two Supertunia Bordeaux, which is a gorgeous purple Supertunia, um, to go with one of the recipes that I picked out for one of those pots. So I will probably do that once those come. They should come early next week is when, um, with the, the shipping estimate gave me. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to get those done pretty soon. But today I want to focus on these three pots. I also found some pot feet at the a garden center over in the Bay Area where my family and I went a couple weeks ago. So I don't know if you guys can see. Um, let me turn around so I can show you guys. So this is my little trio of pots that I have here. They're white uh, ceramic and I don't know if you guys can see but instead of using pot feet I couldn't find any that matched at the time so I just just took some subway tiles that we had left over from um, our kitchen makeover uh, renovations that we did and I just stuck the subway tiles underneath there um, so not very uh, I don't know not the right thing to use for pot feet they definitely aren't they like will kind of slide out and stick around or, or stick out a little bit I'll show you guys this one like see that so not very nice so I'm excited to get the pot feet um, on here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the snapdragons out cut them way back and transplant them into another area of my yard um, just because they're so established and they're so beautiful and I don't want to get rid of them I'll probably transplant the alyssum as well just because it's doing really well I have a spot in my front yard that I think it would look nice and then of course I have a white cyclamen right there that's kind of not in bloom right now obviously because it's getting too warm but I'm gonna transplant that to my shade garden by my front door which is where I have other white cyclamen so yeah so that is my plan for today this pot here is 14 inch diameter this pot here is 14 inch diameter and this one is 8 inch diameter so I think what I'll do is I will get all these plants out change out the soil clean it up and put the pot feed on and then I'll come back and I'll show you guys I'll talk about the flowers that I'm gonna put in and the different recipes all right so let's get started
So I've got my pot feet on and my pots are all filled with new soil. I have to be honest with you guys, this video is going to be the epitome of the magic of editing because I'm sure when I edit this, it's gonna look like it's way easier than it actually was. So as I started cleaning these pots out, I kept seeing slugs come out from underneath. And then so finally I turned the pot over and looked underneath and it was covered solid with slugs. It was disgusting. So recording stopped, white shirt came off and I went and put on some grubby clothes and I scrubbed these pots as clean as I could. I emptied every single little bit of soil, scrubbed them and I really think the issue is, is that I didn't have good pot feet last year. I was just using those subway tiles and it was just, it was just holding too much moisture basically. Once I got to the bottom of the pots, the bottom couple inches were it was not draining very well so i'm really glad that i completely emptied them out and i'm really glad that i found the hiding place for the slugs and um, i'm really glad for editing because <laughs> it was really really gross so i just wanted to tell you guys that you know if you see that it looks all clean and nice it's not how it really is <laughs> it gets it gets a lot dirtier than it looks okay so let's get started with the planting and it's very exciting. So like I said, I'm doing recipes for most of these pots. The one down in the front, I'm going to do that as a monoculture or a mono pot, and I'm going to put my Sunstar Pink Pentis in that one, which I'm very excited about because the bloom heads are supposed to get to about the si almost the size of hydrangeas. So it's a perfect plant for heat um, and for people who have trouble growing hydrangeas like we do. I can grow a panicle hydrangea pretty easily, but all the other types, it's really tough and I have to keep them in shade. So for this big pot right here, it's a 14 inch diameter. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in my continuous release plant food from Proven Winners. I checked the directions on the back and it's about three scoops for a 14 inch pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that. And what this will do is this will just uh, make sure that the plant has a good solid base of food so that if I forget to do the water soluble feeding or if it gets really hot and I have to water it extra, there's gonna be enough food in here for the plants. So it's really important and it's a really good thing to get your plants started off right. Okay, so I just used regular potting soil, nothing special, but adding that food in, you know, obviously makes this potting soil really great for these plants. For this container, I'm gonna use a Proven Winners recipe called Fancy Footwork, and I'll show a picture of it right here to you guys. It just looked so beautiful. I knew I wanted to use the Safari Sky James Britannia just because I wanted to see how it did in our, our heat. This is a South African native, and it's very, very heat tolerant, which is fantastic. Now, I have never grown James Pretenia before, but I'm really excited about it because these petite blooms are gorgeous. They are almost like a, you know, they're purple and white, and then the best way that I can explain it is that it's like a safari sunset. It fades into this orangey yellow eye, and it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm very excited about that. So one thing that Proven Winners does have on their recipes is that they will actually show you where they think you should plant the plants in the pot. Um, so for this one, I have three James Britannia in this size, this size pot, so three Safari Skies. And then the other plant in this recipe is Unplugged Pink. Now I just planted Unplugged So Blue Salvia over in my kitchen window box and I don't even think it's been in there for a month and it's absolutely gorgeous. It is thriving. It is so happy and sending up all those bloom stalks. It's beautiful. So I'm really excited to get unplugged pink in here. I'm gonna use two of them and I'm gonna put them 
kind of in the back. You can see that this tree of pots, the purpose of this is to kind of hide this pool equipment that I have right here. Um, this is a like a plug and then the, the pool light switch and I can't move it obviously. So I'm kind of just surrounding them and thinking of this post back here as the back. So I'm gonna put two of the unplugged pinks back here and then have the three James Britannia Safari Sky in the front. And these James Britannia, they will actually trail about eight inches over the pot, which is perfect because it's gonna kind of mask this equipment right here um, as it grows over. So the unplugged pinks is uh, gonna get about two feet tall. So it's gonna get pretty big. This whole pot is gonna be quite a show, I think, with this fancy footwork recipe. And I think it's gonna be really neat because with the unplugged pink, as, a as opposed to the unplugged so blue that has a purpley blue calyx, the unplugged pink has a black calyx. So black calyx and then the pink flower, I think it's gonna be gorgeous with the purple and white petite blooms of the safari sky. All right, let's get planting. Okay, all planted and looking gorgeous. I do have some inline drip tubing. And then instead of putting a goof plug on the end, I just put this half half gallon per hour drip emitter um, just to get a little bit extra water. So I am just gonna wrap this around and tack it down with landscape stakes. Okay, so there's the fancy footwork, beautiful. Okay, so next up is my monoculture pot or mono pot. And in this small eight inch pot, I am just planning to put one of these Sunstar pink pentas. So they get up to about 22 inches tall. Uh, yeah, height is 18 to 22 inches, around 20 inches wide. And I have to tell you guys, I am so excited about these. Like I was saying, the bloom heads on the Sunstar series are supposed to get almost as big as hydrangea bloom heads. So this series is awesome, an awesome alternative uh, for those of us that live in hot climates for hydrangeas. Um, I have had this plant for about one week and I already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven new buds on here. So this plant is going to be covered in this gorgeous, beautiful pink color. There are other colors in this series like lavender, um, but this pink is beautiful. Beautiful. I'm super excited about it. So eight inch pot. Um, I'm only going to need about three teaspoons of the continuous release plant food. So that's about three of these of half of these scoops. One, two, three. And then again, I have the same drip from last year, which I think is working perfectly well. Um, I didn't add an extra drip onto this one. I just added a goof plug and I'll just kind of wrap it around and tack it down there. All right, let's get this planted. So I was debating whether or not I wanted this one closer to the window so I could see it when I'm inside or if I wanted it facing this way when we were hanging out by the pool. I decided for this way because I thought it would get the most um, the most sun this way. Uh, so I'll just have to see how it does. All right, so that's about it. Sunstar pink pentis, beautiful. All right, so for the last pot in this trio, this pot is going to be my sunny, cheerful yellow combination. I'm basing it off of the lemonade stand recipe from Proven Winners, and you can see from this picture that recipe is based off of a more rectangular container, and this is obviously a round container. It's 14 inches, so I'm just adapting the recipe to fit with this container. Uh, another adaption that I'm doing of the recipe is the lemonade stand has luscious Bananarama lantana and I am actually using luscious citron lantana which is new to garden centers this year I'm really excited about this one because I love this color yellow it's so beautiful and I think the combination with the, the Sunstar pink pentis is gorgeous so this 
luscious series of lantana I'm really excited about because they're bred to have little to no seed. So that means that most of the energy is going to be spent uh, on the blooms and hopefully there will be so many blooms as compared to the other lantanas that I have in my garden, which have a ton of blooms as well. Lantana is a tough plant. It is drought and heat tolerant, and it's one of the ones that I know are gonna bloom in the dead heat of the summer, the dog days of summer. So I'm really excited for this one. Along with the Luscious Citron, I have Super Bells Yellow, which is part of the Super Bells series for Proven Winners. Um, most of the time, Proven Winners recommends that you grow Super Bells in containers because Super Bells actually like to dry out between waterings. They don't like to have wet feet. Um, so I think it will be perfect in this pot, especially because now I have the pot feet and the drainage will be better for that. Um, I actually grew Super Bells Lemon Slice, which is the white and yellow stripe one. I grew it about two years ago in one of these pots and then rather than just taking it out and tossing it I decided to put it in my landscape. So I put it over there by my old greenhouse and knowing or thinking that it wouldn't do very well just because of the recommendation that super bells do better in containers. However, that lemon sliced super bell is doing fantastic. It's come back two years now and it's already come back this year. I completely neglect it and it's absolutely gorgeous. So super bells, they do really, really well for us and I think it's because that we're dry and we're hot um, and it's just, it's just a perfect plant for us. So I'm excited about the super bells yellow and that combination is gorgeous. Then the third one that I have in this lemonade stand recipe or adaption of it is I have the Supertunia Limoncello. And it's, uh, you know, the basic Supertunia. It's wonderful. You don't need to deadhead it. It does like food. So I am gonna fertilize all these pots every week um, throughout the season. But this one is gonna get about six to 12 inches tall and up to two feet wide. So I have a feeling this pot is gonna be overflowing with yellow. And I'm really, really excited about it. I think it's gonna be gorgeous with the purple of the safari sky, the pink of the sun star pink pentis and the yellow I think it'll be beautiful so now for some more magic of editing oh my goodness all potted up <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am so excited to see how all these pots do over the season. I will definitely keep you all updated. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, please consider subscribing and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.